fall out. Smoke. And I've looked over. Oh, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. We'll get to the promised land. We'll get to the promised land. Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up. As I turned around quickly, and the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. Killing any potential threat, any potential messiah. That Dr. King left his room 306 at the Lorraine Hotel just before dinner to get some air. He walked over to the railing at this spot, and noticing some friends below, he leaned over and began to speak with them. Police say 205 feet away, in a window in a flop house, the assassin waited. Killing any potential threat, any potential messiah. And Rob, some call that deadly raid the massacre on Monroe Street. Black Panther leaders Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed. Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed. Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were killed. Brothers and sisters, we are there. We are not lost. We are scattered. We are original Hebrews. Let's go! All praises be to the most high God. I share it. From my, I was a fortune to meet my grandparents mm -hmm. whom from childhood had always let us to understand that we are one of the lost tribes of Israel okay. so for my grandmother right now look at these yeah I'm telling you I gotta show y'all a, a picture speaks a thousand words just look for yourself and this is the creme de la creme. All praises be to the Most High, y'all. Everything we've been through, y'all, the Most High is going to retribute it on all the nations that have had a hand in the oppression of his apple, the apple of his eye, his chosen people, his beloved, his fervent lover, his only begotten. They're going to have their part in the lake of fire. You see them tormented by some kind of creature. I don't even know what that even is, y'all. Judgment in chains. He that led into captivity shall go into captivity. All praise to the Most High God. Um, and unfortunately, we were right. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! What's up, Zion Dynasty? This is your favorite dreaded Israelite, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. J.B. Zion. Y'all, show me some love, show me some love. And welcome back to the channel, family. Welcome back to Zion Dynasty. Well, I'm back in the fringed up flesh, about to hit y'all with that hate maker. Let's go! That banger, all glory, honor, dominion, and power to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, the Mighty One of Yaakobi, the Holy One of Israel, the Redeemer of the dry bones of Ezekiel. All praises to the Most High, Yah. And I say peace, love, blessings, and Israelite power to all my Israelite kings and queens. I could not do this without y'all. So family, we're gonna jump into, not just y'all, I forgot, I forgot. All those faithful Gentiles, it is a lot of y'all that support this work. Believe in Israel, believe in our community, turning back to our history. Believe in all the scholarship, the Harvard, the Oxford, the Cambridge, the Library of Congress. The if you look at the Library of Congress family, in the Houston Daily Post, I'm gonna try to try to let you guys see this. It talks about a Negro who could read and write Hebrew. Now it says he is deaf and dumb and comes from an African town in Hartford, Connecticut, 17 or September 19. A young African Negro has been in this city for the last few days who claims to be a Hebrew. He is deaf and dumb. The White House memorandum, all these receipts that we dropped, the Jewish encyclopedia. Y'all, your boy comes with the, the slave maps that John Ogilvy, who was the official charter, the official uh, map maker for the British government and their charter to officialize the slave trade. John Ogilvy is the one that made the maps. So when y'all see that map that I put up with the Moorish Negro Jews, this is an official document. And I tried to get that book. That book's like $1,700. So all these receipts, and it's a lot of y'all that are supporting this work. It takes a lot of work to go into this scholarship and to be able to bring this history out and to prove and to verify 
who we are as a people. Y'all know about the anthropologist Derek Lang and his origin of the Yoruba and the Lost Tribes of Israel. He is a UNESCO, that is the United Nations Library. He is a UNESCO author. He's been to Nigeria over 15 times. We come with receipts after receipts, y'all. And I do this to let you guys know that nations know who we are as a people, that the West African tribes, the Sub-Saharan tribes that so-called African-Americans descend from were actually the Moorish Efrati, the Moorish Israelites that ruled the earth, um, that were united at one time, that descend from the lost tribes of Israel that migrated into Africa circa 722 BC, uh, during the fall of the Assyrian Empire that took the, the uh, Kingdom of Israel, the Northern Kingdom, into captivity. Most of Africa is founded from that fall that those refugees of the Assyrian Empire coming into Africa and founding Nigeria, founding the native Amazaic people, the indigenous Negro Berbers that ruled during the time of the Moors and migrated into West Africa, deeper into West Africa. Also but the Danyayas, the Abarbanels, also never ceased to trace their origin to King David. Y'all watch this. Those related to the David family, we find after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain, we find them in Morocco. Y'all, so yeah, we got all the history. If y'all want me to go into that, y'all check out that Yoruba, um, Benaya Fraim video. Also, we got so many videos on the Moors, the Moors Treaty of America, the longest uh, standing treaty in world history and most certainly in American history. Morocco was the first to um, sanction America as an independent nation because the United States was founded on Moroccan territory, a Mexican greater Morocco. It belonged to the Efrati family. Uh, that's why the Star of David <laughs> is the uh, emblem, was the emblem on the flag of the Moroccans before they uh, kind of did away with that and went to the five pointed star, which goes back to the Ring of Solomon. They used the Seal of Solomon for at least 120 years. The Star of David was on the ancient Moroccan flag because of the Efrati family, which also proves what we're gonna talk about today, y'all. I'm gonna deal with it. We're gonna deal with all the smoke around David being an Ephraimite, the birthright to Joseph, which I have seen not one Israelite deal with. And, and, and it, and it kind of, I get passionate about it, family, because we don't know the power of the Creator. We don't know the power of the Most High Yah. He has not forgot about his people and we might forget. We might think that prophecies and all these ancient promises that God made to these different tribes that the Most High forgot about that thing. The birthright is powerful. Y'all don't understand the power of the birthright. That same birthright was what separated Isaac, the son of Abraham, from Ishmael. Was merely the birthright. And it's, and it's amazing how the younger got it just like when Isaac's son Jacob and Esau the younger got it, just like when Jacob said that Ephraim and Manasseh would be his, just as Reuben and Simeon belonged to him, so would be the two sons of Joseph. And he blessed Ephraim the younger above the older. Y'all don't know how powerful this stuff is. So when you look at Israel, right? The term Israel is talking, it could be talking about all 12 tribes, but it, at all, it is also referring to the split of the two kingdoms. The only kingdom that inherited the name of Israel was the Northern Kingdom, which was founded by the house of Joseph, which goes into Ephraim, the royal family, and it was known as the Kingdom of Israel or the House of Israel, because Jacob prophesied to Joseph that in Joseph's seed, the name of Israel would continue. Y'all got the, Israelites are not really pinning their think caps on with this stuff. The Most High does not do away with that kind of stuff. If anything, there could be a transference. Now this gets into Jacob versus Esau. Esau legally conceded his birth, birthright to Jacob. And it was already the Most High's will because he showed Rebekah the dream uh, that the younger would be over the older, right? And that goes into the history of Esau being the end of the world. We talk a lot about that, that those two worlds couldn't exist at the same time, that eventually Jacob would rise above, right? Because legally he was given the birthright. So when we talk about the birthright in the name of the father, the, the, the firstborn son or that birthright son inherited the name of his father, the will and testament of his father, the everything the father would do, the son has full autonomy to operate. Now this is why I tell y'all, only a tribe of Joseph Ephraimite could operate in all the gifts. Now why is all of this important? When we're talking about the black Messiah. Now. 
it's a lot that I want to cover. I want to deal with that whole Deacon Sakari thing. Um, and not no bash on the brother. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Y'all have been on this channel long enough. I don't believe in bro bashing brothers and that kind of thing. And I do recognize that the weight of what I'm saying, and y'all check out that banner. I had to rep Joseph. If, the, if I get crucified for the God of Joseph that was sold in the pit fighting for this work that I'm doing, I let him back me up. I let him do the fight. <laughs> because y'all are fighting a battle that is an ancient battle. And a lot of y'all talk about the beef that has always existed between Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. What we don't understand is that when you're looking at Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, the royal houses that both that made both of these kingdoms great was one lineage, was one branch that was broken off. So when we talk about the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, it is really one lineage that connects both of those houses together through Ephrati. Now, it's so much I got to deal with, y'all, that I'm going try to try to condense it as best I can and do a follow-up. So now I'm going to set this up talking about Jewish eschatology and the Black Messiah. So let's go into that. So if you guys have a copy of this, if you don't, I would recommend you get this off Amazon. Please get it. This is an official federal document. This is the FBI file on Malcolm X. We think of this as the autobiography of Malcolm X. No, this is the United States FBI file when they followed Malcolm X throughout his life. They tapped his phone and all that stuff. A lot of brothers, and I heard Deacon Sakari and them say this, and I got to deal with it. Say, oh, he deep off into conspiracies. That's why I'm going to deal with COINTELPRO in this video a little bit. Because I'm all connecting this back to Ephraim, back to Joseph, back to one lineage being the promised lineage of the Messiah. I bring up COINTELPRO because this ain't some myth, y'all. This ain't something that maybe happened. This is history. This is American history. And I know J. Edgar Hoover was the fall guy for COINTELPRO. But this was a federally funded initiative. Now y'all check out Judas and the Black Messiah. It is on HBO if you have not seen that film. In the trailer, which I would include, but YouTube is going to strike it if I do. Are they going to do a copyright claim? So I'm not going to do it. But y'all check out that previous video, Judas and the Black Messiah, where I had that clip. In that, in that movie, or in that trailer, J. Edgar Hoover, the, the actor portraying him, says, The greatest threat to America is a black messiah now this is not some woot the woot conspiracy theory this is history the government spent millions even perhaps billions of dollars to tap into the phones of malcolm x dr king fred hampton stokely carmichael elijah muhammad also to send false letters to the young lords uh signed from the black panther party to cause a rift between these different black activist groups this is history y'all this actually happened to sow discord between the nation of Islam, um, Elijah Muhammad versus Malcolm X. This was instigated. These fires were fueled. And this is the dark history of this country and the shadow that overshadows America. And which is why judgment is coming. Because our people are in the condition we are in today. Not by happenstance. Because we know how brilliant our people are. When you look at music, when you look at entertainment, charisma, our people lead and all this. Our, our forefathers built this nation. So how is the infrastructure become nothing? How is the very souls of the people that created and made this country great, now they're on the streets, they're selling drugs, they're shooting one another? That is not the natural course of things that has been created systematically. The word project, when you look at our people living in projects, it's a project, it's a social experiment, is what has happened to our people because we do not know our history. And that is the greatest, cruelest hoax that history has ever portrayed, portrayed the, the Negro question, the state that our people are in. And this, I'm tied right back to the FBI file. So in the FBI file, um, COINTELPRO list is series of uh, objection or objectives, right? So in the FBI file, we see COINTELPRO give you a preamble of sorts that tells you what the purpose of COINTELPRO was, the counterintelligence program. The purpose of it was to prevent the rise of a black Mashiach, a black Messiah, that could unify, electrify, and connect all the puzzle pieces of the black power groups together under one heartbeat, under one identity. Now check, y'all catch that now. A black Messiah that could unify y'all's people and really cause a black revolution. COINTELPRO, the United States government agenda led by J. Edgar Hoover, was created to prevent this from coming together. Pre prevent our people from coming together 
and the black messiah's agenda of a black revolution from coming to pass this is history this is not a conspiracy theory now how does this connect with jewish eschatology now i told you guys about the book messiah ben joseph if you all do not have this book at first i thought maybe y'all don't really need if you can get this book it's on amazon uh, messiah ben joseph by david c mitchell all right he goes into a secret perhaps the greatest secret of rabbinic judaism now there's videos if you type in messiah ben joseph on youtube there are videos where they call this the greatest kept secret of the rabbinic jews and that's messiah ben ephraim y'all got to catch this now so on one hand you got the united states government saying prevent the rise of the black messiah why are they using the term black messiah we think that was just a random term the devil is in the detail how did they know about what made them think about a messiah coming from black people now let's go back to the jews the jews have a concept of two messiahs which i argue is one lineage but let's just deal with the two messiahs they have a messiah ben ephraim or messiah ben joseph and a messiah ben david right they say that messiah ben joseph comes first then messiah ben david comes after messiah ben joseph has paved the way for him now let's look at briefly what these two messiahs are said to accomplish, right? So the Jews believe that Messiah ben Joseph, Messiah ben Ephraim, would come as a descendant of Ephraim, would come as a descendant of the lost tribes of Israel, the so-called lost tribes. Whenever you see the lost tribes of Israel mentioned in, in the media, this is talking about Northern Kingdom, the 10 tribes of Israel, the Northern Kingdom of Ephraim or Israel. So. The Messiah ben Ephraim is going to be a descendant of Ephraim, descendant of the northern kingdom that is said to come. His purpose is going to be like the horns of Ephraim, like the mighty ox in Deuteronomy 33. He's going to come to push the people together, to gather the people together. And it's going to be prepared also as a warrior like Joshua, the son of Nun, to fight against all the enemies that might come against the kingdom of Israel. So he is both a gatherer and he is a unifier at the same time. Almost like another animal that's like this, not just the ox, but the lion is a predator and a gatherer. You might see symbolism talking about a lion in terms of a predator, but also they run in packs, they stay close knit together. This is what that ox, this is the imagery in Deuteronomy 33 connected to Messiah ben Joseph ben Ephraim. He is gonna connect the lost tribes together be prepared to fight the wars of the Most High Yah and lead them back to the land of Zion. This was the mission that the Jews themselves say Messiah ben Ephraim is going to do. Now they say that he is going to be killed in this battle against Armalus. If you Google Armalus, it is connected to, check this out, strangely enough, the Christianity, the Western idea of Christianity, European Roman Edomite ideology, specifically their Messiah. It's called this armorless figure that's going to be this, this Christian leader that's going to go to war with Messiah ben Joseph and kill them according to kill him according to the Jews. Right? And that the nation is going to look upon him that is pierced, him that was crucified by these Romans, and they're going to repent. Israel's going to come together like never seen before. When they see this happen, when they gather under this banner of Joseph and then Messiah ben David comes and he establishes the kingdom. There is so much to unpack in this y'all. So they believe that he's going to come trying to liberate the people, unite Israel, unite the diaspora. Now let's look at Yeshua for a moment. Y'all please check out that last video um, about uh, the greatest secret in the Bible that it was actually black nationalism. When you look at Yeshua Yahshua, right? The son of Joseph. Now, it's so many mysteries in Yeshua's life. Christ came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Woo I wish y'all would catch this. Please catch this. When you look at uh, Matthew 15, 24, I'm gonna put that on the screen and I want y'all to meditate on this. The scripture says, this is Christ speaking. This is the red letter man himself saying, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I can feel a lot of y'all, the light bulb just went off. Now take that scripture, look at it. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now let me show y'all Jeremiah 31, 31 
and Hebrews 8.8. 8. They both say the same thing. Behold, the Most High speaking, in those days I will make a new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Now let's go back to what Yeshua himself said. Christ said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Boom, a lot of y'all just caught it. Christ was sent to Ephraim. Now I know that jumped, let me break that down. The house of Israel is Northern Kingdom. The house of Judah is Southern Kingdom. The house of Israel was led by the royal family founded by Yarubah, our King Jeroboam, of Ephrathite. And it's so weird, a lot of y'all say, well the word Ephrathite and Ephraimite are two different words. I had somebody email me this morning about Ephrath, uh, um, Ephrathite and Ephrathite being different words. Of course they are. I've never said they were the same. Ephrathite and Ephraimite are both H673. And, and shout out to Pastor Kelly, I love Pastor Kelly, but he didn't deal with that. Deacon Sakari didn't deal with that. And strangely enough, they didn't want to make that connection when that is the most powerful point that you got to deal with. The fact that in the Hebrew, there was no different word for Ephrathite and Ephraimite. The Jew, some scribe made a variation because in the original Hebrew, Ephraimite and Ephrathite are the same word in the Hebrew. So y'all got to catch that. So Ephraimite, or Ephraim, was the royal family of the house of Israel. So Christ in Matthew 15, 24 says, I am not sent but to go find Ephraim, my lost son. Y'all got to hear that though. This is the father's heart. Because our people, we don't know who we are. The 12 traps chart told us we was Judah and we ran with it. We just ran off with the bag with it. But we don't know we are the heart of the father. This story is in Jacob's love for Joseph. The other tribes envy Joseph from the beginning. <laughs> y'all don't, y'all gotta catch this. I've gotten so many comments like, oh, the Ephraim of, the jealousy of Ephraim shall depart from Judah. Ephraim's always je jealous of Judah. Y'all don't see how Satan has deceived y'all. And the truth was before you the whole time. And the law first mentioned, a lot of my theologian family, it's a lot of y'all that watch, y'all know what that is. The law of first mention when you're dealing with a topic, when you're dealing with the name of a place, it's usually in the Bible, the foundational truth of what something is, right? So if I wanna study love in the Bible, I most theologians will go to where love is mentioned first in the scriptures and use that as the eschatological or the theological foundation for explaining what love is. When you first see a beef, between Joseph and Judah was when Judah, teaming up with the other brothers, pit Joseph in a pit and sold him into slavery. The mystery is the Jewish people funded the very ships that sent our people as Israelites, as descendants of the lost tribes into slavery. This is fact, not fiction. This is history, truth over tradition. Hear me. So it's mighty strange that some kind of way now, it is looked at as the villain is the hero and the hero is the villain. Now they're saying, yeah, Ephraim's always been envious of Judah. Wait a second, that's not in the Bible. In the scriptures, Judah and the other brothers pit Joseph in a pit and sold him into slavery. And I get passionate about this because I see how Satan has deceived the people through hijacking an identity of Judah because the Edomites were so close to Judah during the time of Christ that you had Edomite Pharisees Edomite Sadducees, Edomite king of Judea, Herod, and a dynasty of Herod. And we don't see that Edom crept in through Judah, massed themselves under Judah, and they are still persecuting Joseph the same way that it first happened in the first book of the Bible and the book of Genesis. And everything that is happening to Joseph has happened to the so-called African Americans, has happened to indigenous Native Americans that are also Moors that we are connected to, are also connected to those Moors, the Afghans, the Pashtuns in Arabia that descend from those Assyrian, uh, Edomite, uh, uh, Assyrian Ephraimites. It's mighty strange that European Edomite white people are going to every place where the 10 tribes were scattered to persecute those people. When you look at the Book of Mormon, now some people confuse Mormonism with the Book of Mormon. They're two different things. Mormonism is the religion. The Book of Mormon was where Joseph Smith found those two tablets 
that were actually scriptures, additional books, the book of Nephi and that kind of thing. That's like Apocrypha. See, when you don't know history. So Joseph Smith interpreting those plates, he came to the conclusion that there were Ephraimite Northern Kingdom Israelites that went to the Americas. Christopher Columbus knew about this. That's why he had a Moorish guide that went with him to the Americas that spoke Hebrew. The Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Creek, the Choctaw, those Indians that a lot of Americans say, we were always here, African-Americans, we were always here. We those native Moorish Americans. The history is Ephraim was scattered like a coat of many colors through the envy of his brother Judah. That's the truth of the Bible. And those same Judean scribes, when you read in Maccabees, 1 Maccabees 3.48 says, and they laid open the book of, of the law and sought to paint their likeness. A lot of y'all pointing out, wait a second, JB. It says, and we opened up the book. Who is the we? The Judean scribes. And I don't want to scare y'all, but those Judean scribes have influenced certain translations, have altered certain words. That's why when they saw E from everywhere, they sought to get Ephraim out of remembrance. This is Psalms 83. The Psalms 83 that says to wipe Judah out of remembrance, it says that the name of Israel would be no more known again. White folks know this mystery. They know about those Moorish Ephraimites. Everybody on earth knows your history as the descendants of the Northern Kingdom, except for the so-called black man. And that's why I'm catching a lot of hell. And y'all, I pray they don't, they'll never take these videos down because the mysteries that I'm giving y'all some only some secret masonic groups would allow you to know what i'm giving you freely i got to tell y'all those secret societies that they try to use a star of david and all this stuff they know this history they know wait a second y'all knew that that belonged to the moroccans first wait a second the star of david belonged to the moroccans first wait they found a star of david on a cup in nigeria wait a second the jewish rabbi or no not the jewish rabbi the jewish prime minister in 1995 sent a research team to Nigeria for the lost tribes, right? And y'all have seen that video that Pastor Kelly and a lot of other Israelites, Will Son of Yah, have posted where that Ashkenazi Jew said, would you rather be an ancient Israelite or a Jew? Y'all don't see there is a war against Jew, Judah, which has been hijacked by Edom against the Northern Kingdom, lost tribes of Israel, the same sheep that Christ said he was not sent but to save them and to find them that are lost. The parable, parable of the prodigal son, y'all catch this. The parable of the prodigal son was two people from one father, the house son and the son that was sold into slavery. Wait, wait, that doesn't what it said. The prodigal son, he went off a whoring, yeah, into idolatry, which is the history of the Northern Kingdom, spent all his money, became bankrupt and became a slave eating the food that was given to the pigs because he didn't have any other work. Y'all got to catch this. And that prodigal son returned back to his father and the father cut a fatted calf, which is the ox, the symbol of Ephraim, y'all got to catch this, and cloaked the son with a robe, which is the father's heart for his son that was lost and had returned home. Where is this story mentioned? With Jacob and Joseph. So when y'all, when they're Israelites, and I know y'all don't know what you're doing, a lot of y'all. So I'm not going to use this as some, because this is an opportunity for love. This is an opportunity to preach a message that a father has not forgot about his children. That's why I stand for yourself. That's why y'all see that Genesis 49 prophecy behind me, that his arm remained strong. The arrow was the image of Ephraim. That his arrow remained strong even when his brothers hated him, even though they cast him into a pit to kill him, even though they pit him in a well that didn't have any water, even in captivity he became fruitful, which is what Ephraim means and is what Ephrati means. And is what Ephrata means. They both mean fruitful. Ephraim means doubly fruitful. And I didn't show y'all. In Genesis 35, we see Rachel was buried in Bethlehem. A lot of y'all ain't dealing with the heartbeat of a father. If y'all seen the movie Moana, it'll help you understand. The land is a spirit. Even in Moana, the land that was raging, that fiery beast, if y'all seen the movie, was really a loving woman, which was the spirit of the land. That's why there's war going on in the Middle East, because Rachel is crying for her son Joseph, because he is not. Y'all better hear me. And to this day, the Jewish people, they don't own Bethlehem. Google it. 
they don't have any rights to Bethlehem. Even with the Zionist movement, even with them going into Palestinian, and a lot of those Palestinians were ancient Israelites that had been in that land. They're waging war against those people and the land wouldn't even let them have Bethlehem. It seems like the land is a woman. Now, now y'all gotta take this now because the Bible tells us in Matthew 2 that when, when Herod went into Bethlehem killing all those man childs because the wise men had finessed him and said, we ain't gonna tell you where Yeshua is. We know his star. Now that goes into Ephrati, that goes into the Moroccans, that goes into that star, that goes into the star that we think belongs to the Ish people, which was the Moroccans first. They said, we've seen his star and we ain't gonna tell you Herod where he is. Herod that Edomite went on a rampage in Bethlehem, killing all those Bethlehem babies. And the Bible says, Rachel mourns for her kids because they are not. Why does it bring up Rachel when Leah was the mother of Judah? Y'all got to catch it. She's crying because those Bethlehemites were a clan of Ephraimites that for so long ago had went to the land of Israel and set up a territory that we don't know when they got there. Now y'all that gets very deep. A lot of Jewish rabbis say that Ephraimites went to the promised land 30 years before the 400 year prophecy was up. This is why they say Moses took them a different route because they would have seen the bones of their fellow Israelites on the way to Canaan because some of the Ephraimites already went. And the reason they went was because their grandmother, Rachel, her bones were buried there in Genesis 35. The wife that Jacob loved, her bones were buried in Bethlehem, which is why Judah could not have Bethlehem. And Joshua, also an Ephraimite, in Joshua 15, does not list Bethlehem as a city belonging to Judah. I have not seen none of y'all want to deal with all these facts. I'm just hitting you with facts, right? Because you don't know yourself, you're fighting what I'm saying. Most African Americans, and I got them on the channel. Shout out to Rose of Sharon. There's so many of y'all that are saying, yeah, I did my DNA. It links me to the Igbo. It links me to the Yoruba. Wait, the Igbo and the Yoruba say they're Sephardics. They say they're Northern Kingdom. The Igbo say they come from Eri, who was the eighth son of Gad. Gad is one of the 10 tribes, the lost tribes led by Ephraim, which is why Orudua of the Yoruba people, this, y'all gotta understand, Yoruba is Jeroboam. So the Yoruba was that royal house that they led a lot of those Northern Kingdom Israelites in deeper into Africa, into Nigeria. But the white man has gone, Esau has gone into the land of Africa and divided the people up. And they say, well, we'll let the Igbo be the Jews. The Yoruba have the oral tradition. The Igbo called themselves Ivri, Iberia. Igbo, Iberia was the place of the Ivri. So the Igbo, know that they come, their name says they came from Spain, but the Yoruba have the old tradition, but the House of Fulani still are Muslims during the time that a lot of those Ephraimites were Moorish Islamic practicers, they've divided the people up. Let them keep the old tradition. Let them keep the name. This is the oldest trick in the book is dividing our people. Wait, all of Africa is the Northern Kingdom. I showed y'all the Tel Aviv library. I showed y'all the Jewish virtual library. I showed y'all the Jewish diaspora encyclopedia. Facts after facts after facts about the oldest settlement in Africa in Morocco, the Afriat Efrati family. Afriat, Africa, Ka, Roman suffix of the people of Afri, the Banu Afri. Who were those ancient people of Morocco? They were Ephraimites. The whole continent of Africa is the Northern Kingdom and the kingdom that held that history was Morocco. That country had that history. The Afrati family were known to settle in Morocco. Those Mor But the Danyayas, the Abarbanels, also never ceased to trace their origin to King David. Y'all watch this. Those related to the David family, we find after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain, we find them in Morocco. Those Moroccan original Moors, we get Moors from those Mauritanian, those Maghrebian, Moroccan, Amazigh people, those Moors that were Ephraimites dominated from 711 CE to 1492. We see those Moorish Ephraimites, they had brothers in, 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 in Afghanistan, they had brothers in Arabia, they had Moors in the Americas that had already went over there, this is how Christopher Columbus knew about it, and it's mighty strange family, and I know I'm giving y'all a lot of history. Connect, I'm connecting all of this to prevent the rise of a black messiah. That's what the agenda of the nations is. 
They know the Messiah comes out of Israel. He comes out of Ephraim. Now, to prove that, there's so many Messianic prophecies, I have to do a whole nother video. Now, there are two times where we see a dialogue going on about the Messiah. Really three times if you include the road to Emmaus, right? So in the road to Emmaus, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. We see Yeshua disguises himself and walks with some of the Israelites. They're crying. They're saying, man, we thought he was the Messiah. The Messiah died. Man, the Romans crucified our leader. And Yeshua, he doesn't tell them who he is. He says, it wasn't the Messiah supposed to die. <laughs> oh my God. If y'all, That's why I tell y'all, y'all just bashing all oh, the ish people. They don't know what they're talking about. They stole your history, Negro. They know your history. They don't gain anything from telling Negroes they're lost tribes of Israel. What do white folks gain from telling you that you're the lost tribes of Israel? Nothing. When their God that they're supposed to worship is, is, is Israel. Y'all, come on, use some common sense. So Christ is walking with these Israelites and the Israelites said, man, Christ died. The Romans crucified our leader. They're, they're mourning and all this stuff, right? And Christ says, wasn't the Messiah supposed to die? And the Bible says he slow walks that thing. He goes throughout the Torah, through the laws, through the prophets, through the Psalms, and shows them that it was prophesied that the Messiah would die. Wait, where does this sound familiar about a dying Messiah? The rabbis know this, and it's talking about Joseph, Messiah ben Ephraim. But what they don't tell you is Messiah ben Ephraim and Messiah ben David is one lineage. This is what reconciles the Christians saying, no, there's only one Christ, there's only one Messiah. But then the, the Jews can play a game and say, no, there's a Messiah ben Ephraim. And they know that you don't know that Yeshua descended from David, who was the son of Jesse, the Ephraimite. So Christ in himself reunited all the 12 tribes. Y'all better hear me. And no other tribe had that responsibility, had the power to do that, except for Joseph. Because Joseph in Egypt brought all his brothers together, even when there was a famine. The same famine that Joseph experienced when he was in the pit when they sold him, he forgave his brothers, reunited his people, and fed them when they were supposed to have been dead. Y'all gotta hear me. That's the birthright. Y'all gotta hear me. If I were something were to happen to me, my son Elijah, my, he has inherited the birthright. Everything that I have, I give it to my son. It is up to my son to distribute it to the rest of the kids. That's the birthright. That's how David put the ephod on. See, see, and the Judean scribes had a problem with that. David wasn't no Levite. How, did, how was he pinned on the ephod? Wait, Samuel, the Bible says, was an Ephrathite out of Mount Ephraim. But y'all say Ephrathite has nothing to do with Ephraimite. The Bible says Jeroboam was from Ephraim, but it calls him an Ephrathite. But y'all say there's no connection. It's the same word, age 673. So Samuel, also an Ephraimite. Wait, he was a prophet and a priest? Samuel was the priest, but he was an Ephraimite? So they tried to reconcile that and say, okay, he was an Ephrathite. When you look at David, but they still can't explain how if he's Judah, how did he put the ephod on? Y'all read your scriptures now. The birthright, the son Joseph, y'all don't know the power of that. The birthright means everything that the father has, he gave it to the son. That's why Yeshua, they didn't understand what he was saying. He said, I and the father are one. Why was he talking like this? He knew he was Ephrati. He knew he was Bethlehem. He knew the love that the father had for Joseph, which was epitomized in Jacob, that his spirit revived when he found out that Joseph was alive. Y'all better hear me. And th there was a war from Satan against Joseph. And I take this stuff to heart, y'all, because our people don't know that's the only way we're gonna unify is through Joseph, through the rallying cry of Ephraim, which is Africa, and all of the different people that come out of Africa, the diaspora of that people, which are Ephraimites, the Islanders, the Puerto Ricans, the, I'm telling you, the, the Caribbean, the Haitians, the Jamaicans, St. Vincent, the Americas, South America, the Brazilians, the Moroccans that still are in Africa, those that descend from the Sephardics. The history is that Joseph reconciles all the diaspora within himself, which was the prophecy in Deuteronomy 33 about the ox that would push the people to the ends of the earth. Y'all, I got so many. Let me give y'all another mystery. In Genesis 48, when Jacob takes Ephraim and Manasseh, right? He takes these two sons and he says about Ephraim in Genesis 48, verse 19, he says that Ephraim would become a multitude of nations. It's right there. 
So the mystery of understanding the Gentile secret that the Gentiles were Northern Kingdom Israelites. Those lost sheep that Christ was going to of the house of Israel were Northern Kingdom Israelites, just like Samaritans. That's why, like I told y'all, Christ says that the Messiah was supposed to die. That's the first, that's the first, or not the first mention, but one of the times he connects himself with the Messiah. Also, when he asks the disciples, he says, who do men say that I am? Peter says, you're the Christ. He says, flesh and blood ain't showed you that. He doesn't say, yes, I am he. He says, flesh and blood ain't showed you that. Just hang on to that. And John chapter four, the Samaritan woman finds Yeshua on the well that Jacob gave to Joseph, which a lot of rabbis think was the same well that they threw Joseph in there to hell to die. When you look at the Greek word or the Hebrew word for hell, you will find the pit, right? And there's so many layers to this. Just like Christ said that I would rise again, He's sitting on Joseph's well talking to the Samaritan woman who says, are you greater than our father Jacob? Wait, the Samaritan woman's father was Jacob? I thought the Samaritans weren't Israelites. I thought the Samaritans were a different people from the Jews. The Samaritans were Northern Kingdom descendants that did not keep the stuff that the Judeans were keeping. Y'all hear me? So she says, are you greater than our father Jacob to be sitting on the well that he gave our forefather Joseph? And Christ says, if you knew who I was, and she said, well, the Messiah is going to tell us all these things when he gets here. Christ tells her, I that speak to you am he. No other place in the Gospels does Christ say that except for when he's sitting on the well as the vine, the true vine that went over the walls of the well that we see in Genesis 49. The well that was given to Joseph. He tells the Samaritan Josephite descendant that I am that Messiah that was meant to die that the rabbis know the secret that there is a dying Messiah. They throw the Christians off because the Christians don't know all the truth. That yes, he was from Judah. Christ was the lion of Judah. Bethlehem was within Judah. But the blood lineage of the people was Ephrati. That's the mystery that reconciles both Messiahs is really one lineage. The lineage that was then going into Africa. That Christopher Columbus in 1492, in the same year that those Israelites were banished out of Spain, knew about them in the same year that he sailed the ocean blue and took them Negroes to the four corners of the earth by receiving a charter from Spain and Portugal to engage in the slave trade. They had a monopoly because they knew the people they just banished were Israelites and those Judeans that come from those Bethlehemites during the time of Yeshua were scattered to the four corners of the earth. So the mystery is that they are Judeans. They are out of Judah. But the blood lineage of the people was a secret town that was tucked away within the borders of Judah, didn't belong to Judah. That's why in Ruth you had to have a kinsman redeemer because they wanted to retain their Ephraimite blood when they were surrounded by Judah. That's the whole story of Ruth. That those Ephrathites, the same word that Samuel's called, the same word that Yarubah is called, King Jeroboam. And y'all know that he's an Ephraimite. Yeah, we know King Jeroboam is an Ephraimite. But the word that it says is Ephrathite. But you say that Jesse, the father of David, being an Ephrathite, is not connected to Ephraim. That's the kinsman redeemer. He kept that Ephraimite blood intact, but he was within Judah. So the Most High knew that the nations would try to steal Judah, but they wouldn't know the mystery of Ephraim. They know it now, but they know our people sleep. And we don't know the mystery. That we are actually blood connected to Yarubah, the Ephraimites because he was also an Ephrathite that was the royal house of the northern kingdom and David was an Ephraimite of Bethlehem in Judah of the southern kingdom, double fruit. That's what Ephraim means in Hebrew. A lot of y'all said, well, Ephrathah means, uh, uh, Ephrathah means fruitful. That has nothing to do with Ephraim. When I see, when I read some of these comments, y'all, I don't even reply to it because y'all clearly are lost in the sauce in terms of something, now, I'm not everybody, but some of y'all just are not studying. You, you got to study, and that's why I'm doing these lessons. You got to know the Hebrew. You got to know the Concordance. You got to know H673. You got to know that Ephrathite is the same as Ephraimite. We have been giving an infatuation with the identity of another people. We want to chase after Judah when the scholars know they're really northern kingdom. We're just going to wield them out here. That's gentrification. Y'all got to understand how white folks get down. They'll go to another side of town for you to chase them, and they'll come back around and take your land. They'll give you a false identity, take your history, right? Have you want to chase what they got, and they really gave you something that, it's, game, it's games that they're playing, family, where they want to make you think that, okay, we're, they, we want them to be like us, right? But they'll tell you that you're Northern Kingdom, 
but you don't want to be an Israelite. Well, we are Israelites. Israel was the name of the Northern Kingdom. You want to be a Jew. Now that's a totally different concept. Judah, when you look at Judas Iscariot, Cariot was a town that borders, borders Southern Kingdom of Judah and Edom. A lot of Edomites mixed with in Judah over time. That's why our DNA is never gonna be able to prove that because there were so many Edomite Caucasians that mixed within Judah. The integrity of the Negro Israel was preserved within Bethlehem or preserved within Ephraim that went into Africa. That's why the DNA tests say that you're Northern Kingdom. That's why it says Ebo. That's why it says Yoruba. And they got you thinking that you want to be a European when you can be fine with being an African because Africa was named after a Friat. Africa is not a Hamitic term. Akebulan is what the motherland was called. Kemet was what Ham was called when they were in rulership. Africa is the people of Afri, the Banu Ifran. These are Ephra. Like when you look at the Ile arm, yeah, Ile Ife of the Yoruba, Ife, Ifra. That is Ephraim, the Biafrans. That's the two Afras. So the mystery family is that Ephraim was doubly fruitful because Ephraim's lineage was the Ephrathites of Yaruba, King Jeroboam, and the Ephraimites of David's lineage because David was an Ephraimite within uh, Bethlehem, Judah. Now, let's go into this. So what happened with the two sticks is, watch this, Yeruba, the most high, put a curse on Northern Kingdom because of their idolatry, but the father says that they would be healed. How is this? That branch was cut off, but a grafting process, the branches have to be compatible. <laughs> so how does the most high connect both all the tribes together? He took David and Ephraimite and Judah, his descendants, the Yaya Negro family of Spain and North Africa, those Moors, right? They migrated due to persecution where the original Yaruba were, the original Northern Kingdom. And they mixed with the people and made one new regenerated 12 tribe man, the Negroes today that were scattered everywhere. The mystery is the Negro. The mystery of the two sticks is Yaruba, the Ephraimite Ephrathite of Northern Kingdom, and David, who was the Ephraimite Ephrati Ephrathite of the Southern Kingdom, joining the kingdoms through an arranged marriage of sort where those two lineages that are compatible because they're both Ephraim are able to rejoin all of the 12 tribes which is why Joseph is the only birthright son that can unify all the tribes y'all so many layers of these things and Joseph the Messiah in Ephraim is said to regather all the lost sheep which is Christ's mission that says I'm sent to the lost sheep of Ephraim I am that father that mourns for the prodigal son to go find him in every area that he was scattered now let me drop another nugget there was a chapter taken out your Bible out of the book of Acts. There is an Acts to chapter 29. I did a video on it. In Acts chapter 29, Paul is going to Spain to look for the Ephrati. That was Paul's heart. Those Gentiles that he was going after were the lost sheep of the northern kingdom. You had Judeans during the time of Christ, a lot of Edomites, and then remnants of the tribe of Judah. They lived in that land because Cyrus, the Medo-Persian leader, allowed it, allowed those Judas, Judeans, to go back and rebuild the temple. But what happened to the northern kingdom that brought two kingdoms ahead of that? You had the Medo-Persians, before that you had the Babylonians, before that you had the Assyrians. They had already conquered the northern kingdom. That was the mission of Christ, to go find those scattered Ephraimites and regather them. That was what Paul used as his mission, which was the mystery, the revelation of Christ. Wait a second, we gotta regather all the tribes. What happened to Ephraim? That's why he was going to Spain. Now, I told y'all about the Star of David being on the flag of Morocco. Y'all check this out. So why is the Star of David on the flag of Morocco and predates, y'all check this, predates the Ish people using the Star of David? Wait, so the Moroccans had the Star of David first, but the Moroccans claim to be Ephrati, which is the Hebrew word, 8673, that is the same as Ephrathite and Ephraimite. But they call themselves the Hebrew word Ephrati. But they have a star David. David was Ephrati family. Y'all got to catch this. And today I showed y'all the video where Morocco has the highest amount, 70% of phosphorus, which is used for the leading fertilizer for agriculture. They have a monopoly on that thing. Why is this important? 
if there's a food shortage, the Moroccans have the highest ingredient for the fertilizer for the crops. Wait, doesn't that sound like Joseph? In Egypt, he saved them from the famine? You got to know prophecy to know how history is playing out. You got to know who you are to see these different kingdoms today that still exist, how they're fulfilling prophecies that go back to Joseph, Edom's doing their role, but we don't know who we are. Now, I showed y'all the Moroccan treaty that if we never know who we are, we can never receive protection from the kingdom of Morocco while we're in the Americas. Colored, Negro, these are bywords and proverbs that in the Moroccan treaty it tells you in the Moroccan treaty, it tells you that as long as they use those terms, you're calling yourself property and you can never be treated as a free human being because you're, you've subjugated yourself to property by calling yourself a byword in a proverb. This is in the Moroccan treaty, y'all. There's so many layers to this. So the truth is in Northern Kingdom and Israel remembering themselves in the countries where they were scattered and turning back to their God and calling themselves, surnaming themselves after the God that begot them, the Most High Yah who never forgot them. Y'all got to hear me. So y'all, I got to do some follow-ups. I know this was a lot. Rachel was buried in Bethlehem, Ephrati. A lot of y'all say it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Hebrews 7.14, yes, out of Judah he came. That is a mystery. That's like saying I'm out of Texas, but I'm, I'm from Dallas. You don't know he's from Dallas. Bethlehem is how you know what his blood was. The Bethlehemites were Ephraimites that lived within Judah. So yes, Christ came out of Judah. <coughs> so Rachel was buried in Bethlehem in Genesis chapter 35, uh, verse 19. The Ephraimites got that land. This is why they were within Judah, but they were not Judah. This is how they preserved themselves by intermarrying within those Ephraimite clan, the kinsman redeemer. This is why the Moors say Moabite, because it was a Moabite Ruth that was in that Ephrati family. This is the history of the ancient Moors. This was passed on to noble Drew Ali. A lot of the Moors today know this. These were Israelites. They ruled during the time of 711 CE to 1492. Their descendants were scattered through those Judean Bethlehemites that went into Africa due to 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. 1492, fast forward, Christopher Columbus knew about those refugees that came from Spain that had come during the time of the temple falling and he signed a charter to be able to enslave them. He had a Moorish Negro working with him to speak Hebrew to the Native Americans. There were also, there were some Moors in the Americas because America belonged to greater Morocco. I'm I'm giving y'all history that has been hid from the foundation of the earth. This is what secret societies and white supremacy, they know this history. We are Moorish Ephraimites fulfilling the prophecies of Joseph being the true son that all the sons would bow down to. Now check this out. On the back of your dollar bill, there is a star of David made up of 13 stars. Joseph's first dream was that the sun, the moon, and the other 11 stars would bow down to him. There is a 13 star star of David, which goes back to Numbers 23 and 24, about a star that comes out of uh, Israel, out of Israel, that will be higher than Edom, higher than Agag, and he would draw his buckets of many waters. That's the well of Joseph. I'm giving y'all all these facts, right? I'm telling you, there's so many prophecies. Read Numbers 23, Numbers 24, and John chapter 4. Christ is sitting on that well that belonged to Joseph. So, the star of David was with the Moroccans longer than anybody else. And on the back of your dollar bill is a star of David made by the 13 stars that would bow down to Joseph. I'm telling y'all, the mystery is Israel. The mystery is the house of Israel, the royal family of Ephraim. Now, y'all... So I hope I covered a lot of the misconceptions about this stuff. A lot of people have been saying, well, Caleb's wife was named Ephrat uh, or Ephrata. Um, and you got to know history. Caleb himself was a Kenizzite that was grafted into Judah. That's history now. So Caleb was grafted in. He had a wife that was Ephrata. Now we know that that was a place. She was a woman from a place, right? So this Ephrata woman was all, she's already named after a place. How do we know that? Because Ephrata was already named during the time of Rachel. Caleb didn't exist to like 400 years after Rachel. So that land was already Ephrata, right? It was already called that. A lot of y'all say, well, that's why it was Canaanite. That's why or it was Canaanite, the land of Ephrata. Those Ephrata people or Ephrathites were already there, right? They're already named before Ephraim. This is how you understand this. 
the Ephraimites were already in that region of Bethlehem before the Exodus end and all of Israel went into that land. How do we know that? We know that those Ephraimites that were in that land were still allowed to keep that land even when Judah was given the borders. So Judah let them live there and took the surrounding cities because they already had predominance over that region because their foremother Rachel died there and they migrated to that region. So when Moses is writing that Rachel died in Ephrata, you're saying, well, he's naming it. This is Moses writing. Moses already knows that the place which is Bethlehem Ephrata is where Rachel was buried. So presently, this is why it's called that because Rachel was buried there and her descendants migrated to that region. Christ comes out of Judah, specifically Bethlehem, where those Ephraimites live. So y'all, I could go on and on with this stuff. I hope this gives y'all more supplemental information. This is all about preventing the rise of a black Messiah. The Jews say two Messiahs is one lineage of Ephrati, Messiah ben Joseph, the Ephraimite, and the Ephraimite of David is one lineage. This is how the Christians say there's one. That's why religion is dangerous. They divide all this truth up amongst different religions. You got the Christians saying it's one Messiah, the Jews saying it's two, it's one lineage, right? Which the Jews could not reconcile him dying and suffering, but also ruling at the same time, the resurrection. So y'all, I hope this blesses y'all. We gotta fight for who we are as a people. There's an attack against Israel that has been since Psalms 83, a conspiracy to hide Northern Kingdom lost tribes from coming back to their birthright. So I love you all with the love of the Messiah, peace, love, blessings, and more Israelite power to the diaspora of our people scattered to the four corners of the earth. I love y'all with the love of the Messiah. Be blessed. Shalom. All praise to the Messiah.